Let's imagine that you are floating through empty space all by yourself. An unlikely scenario for sure. But let's also imagine that you happen to be moving towards a black hole. In order to figure out this hypothetical, we first need to understand black holes, starting with gravitational lensing. This is a phenomenon caused by very massive objects in space to curve the light of other objects from behind them, creating what is called an Einstein ring. Note that light is massless, and it travels in a straight path, which begs the question, why is it affected by gravity? The answer is that gravity is not a force. Light bends because the spacetime itself that it is traveling through is bent. Imagine it like drawing a straight line on a piece of paper and then bending the paper itself to make the line bend. This topic would honestly deserve a video on its own. So to get back on topic, a black hole possesses so much mass in relation to its size that beyond a certain distance from its center, nothing is able to escape, including light. This is the event horizon, and its distance from the center of the black hole is the Schwarzschild radius. 1.5 Schwarzschild radii away from the center, we get the photon ring. This is the sphere where light is able to perfectly orbit the black hole. This is such a thin area that even light which may end up here will eventually escape either falling into the black hole or moving into space which would be visible to the naked eye as a faint ring at 2.6 times the Schwarzschild radii away from the center. It appears at this distance due to the gravitational lensing as all light that approaches within this radius will be consumed by the black hole. The first photon capable of escaping is the one that enters just outside of this radius and grazes the photon sphere, so a black hole appears to be 2.6 times larger than it actually is. What makes many of the black holes in our universe detectable is their accretion disk. This disk is composed of various material that's heated to a million degrees from friction. And thanks to traveling a considerable portion of the speed of light, the part approaching us appears brighter than the part moving away. But to address the elephant in the room, the part of the disk behind the black hole is lensed around it, making the entire disk visible at all angles. If you were to fall into a black hole with an accretion disk, you would die way before you could get anywhere near the event horizon, as X-rays given off by the disk would vaporize your body. So let's instead fall into a black hole without an accretion disk. Odds are you won't be moving directly towards the black hole. Instead your trajectory would first seem to point past it. However, you would be pulled in by gravity and just like that, you would cross the event horizon, which is surprisingly uneventful. For a long period of time, nothing actually happens to your body yet. However, the universe behind you would get compressed into a small point. As you approach singularity, the point where everything breaks down, your body is subjected to different levels of gravitational pull, and so you stretch towards the singularity. This is referred to as spaghettification, and it eventually gets so bad that you would be ripped to your atoms, and needless to say, you would die. To an outside observer, you would appear to move slower and slower as you approach the event horizon while also becoming more and more redshifted until you would fade away as a lot of you would no longer be able to make it back out. Depending on the size of the black hole, this can take a while. In fact, to you falling in, it can take months before spaghettification suddenly ends you in just a matter of a few seconds. As someone with great hatred against misinformation, let's talk about fallacies regarding black holes. For example, seeing that someone falling into a black hole would turn redshifted might make one assume that the falling person's perspective of the universe would blue shift. This is however incorrect. Blue shift would only occur if the person falling in would somehow manage to become stationary at one point. Doing the calculations, a slight redshift is what you would actually observe due to gravitational bending, which by the way isn't the same as the Doppler effect. You would also not see the universe age exponentially, as that would effectively allow you to look into the future. That is of course impossible, as light from distant sources have not yet been emitted and would not be able to travel fast enough to make it here anyway. Now, for another thought experiment, let's imagine that the Earth were to be swallowed by a black hole. This is also very unlikely to happen, but if it were to, it would be among the most epic ways that humanity could be wiped out. 
If the black hole in question is the same as that of the black hole at the center of our galaxy, which is considered supermassive, the fun would once again end early, as the radiation from the accretion disk would completely wipe every living thing off of the surface of the planet. Earth then would be completely destroyed by the material in the disk and would eventually become a part of this ring of matter. If by some luck Earth avoided the accretion disk and entered the black hole elsewhere, not much would happen for a long time until the tidal forces began acting upon the planet. Earth would slowly start to be ripped apart. In the process, supermassive volcanoes would appear all over while winds of thousands of miles per hour would sweep in the direction of the singularity. And just like in our original experiment, Earth itself now would spaghettify into a stream of plasma. Note that in the case of smaller black holes, this would occur before the Earth would even reach the event horizon, as the smaller the black hole is, the greater the tidal forces are. Thankfully, we don't have to worry about such scenarios actually occurring in real life. What poses greater threat to Earth comes in a smaller and rockier form. Stay tuned for that. Also, thank you so much for your incredible feedback on my previous video. You are awesome.